Hi, Andrew here. Today I would like to teach you how to use this graph to write the equation for the rational function. So in order to use the graph, we need to understand two things about the graph. We have to understand the intercepts, where they are, what they are, and the asymptotes. Again, where they are and what they are. So there's going to be two types of intercepts. There's going to be x-intercepts and y-intercepts. Remember, the x-intercepts is going to be where this function crosses the x-axis. Now, there's a little ambiguous, but I'm going to assume that this thing kind of trails on and on for forever to the left and never crosses the x-axis there, and then the same thing uh, for that one. So, in other words, there's only going to be one x-intercept where this function crosses that x-axis. So it appears to be that there's one x-intercept at x is equal to 3. The next thing I'm going to do, then, is focus on my y-intercepts. And that's simply where the function crosses the y-axis. Now, if this is a function, it should only have one y-intercept. You might have several x-intercepts, that's fine, but you should only have one y-intercept, so it appears that it's going to be located right there at 1. So we just write that down. Let me change the color. And that's that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the asymptotes. Okay, the asymptotes, remember, is, is where the function cannot obtain or cannot uh, has an undefined result when you plug in a certain x value. So that's the point of these vertical asymptotes. You have two types of asymptotes now. You have vertical asymptotes and you have horizontal asymptotes. All right. Turns out when the horizontal asymptote, right, it's basically going to, it, it has a horizontal asymptote at zero. You can kind of ignore that. I, I, I wouldn't even really worry about that on the tails. Uh, but we do have two very unique uh, vertical asymptotes. And we're going to give the equation of the line for that vertical asymptote. And the equation of this red line here, this dotted red line, is going to be x is equal to negative 3. All right. And then the other one is going to be x is equal to 4. So let's write those down as our vertical asymptotes. So it's going to be, maybe I'll leave out the equal sign here. I'll put a colon. And we're going to say uh, that it's going to be x uh, equaling negative 3 and also x equaling uh, 4. Okay. For the intercepts also, you can also put, plug this in in terms of, um, you know, you can have a coordinate. You could write 3, 0, right? And then it would be for the y-intercept, because that might be confused with a, a, vert, a um, horizontal line. You can plug it in as 0, 1, all right? Now, so there's no horizontal asymptote. Basically, I'm going to just get rid of it. Now, this is all we need to solve the problem. Now, remember, any rational function, okay? is simply going to be, you're going to have some polynomial function on the top, call it h of x, and something on the bottom, call it g of x. It doesn't really matter. But what's important is that the vertical asymptotes will give you insight into what factors to plug into your denominator, because in order for this function to have no value, or in, in other words, for there to be an error or an indefinite value, uh, zero must be plugged into the denominator. All right, so these x values must somehow give a value of 0 in the denominator, and you can't divide by 0. That's why there's vertical asymptotes there. So what I'm simply going to do is take these x values. All right, I'm going to write x, and then I'm going to just change the sign. So I'm going to write x plus 3, and then x minus 4. And what that does now is that gives me two expressions, in which case, if I were to plug in negative 3 here for x, that bad boy goes to 0, and if I were to plug in 4 for x there, that bad boy goes to 0. So that's basically now how I'm going to get a 0 in the denominator, one of those two factors. All right. Then we move on to the numerator, and that's where we focus on the x-intercept. All right. So the x-intercept, just focus on the x value, and we're going to do the same thing. Because the x-intercept, remember, the function's value is going to be 0. Now the only way to give a 0 result here is going to be if there's a 0 in the numerator. So it's the same exact logic. So if this is the x-intercept of 3, then what you're going to do is x minus 3 as your factor. Because if you plug 3 in there, 3 minus 3 is 0. All right, so that takes care of that. Last but not least, we've got to take into account then the y-intercept. Now, the way we do that is by simply, I'm going to put in a little um, coefficient All right, in front. Now, what we're going to do is you're going to take the coordinates of the y-intercept. When x is 0, y must be 1. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to plug in your 0. Uh, for x and your 1 for the value of y or the value of the function. All right. And then we're going to solve for that coefficient. So that's the coefficient times then 0 minus 3 all divided by. Now notice you got you to save the y-intercept for the end because otherwise you'd have no x's to plug it into. Right. So this is then going to be 0 minus 4 
and then all we're going to do is now calculate this. We're basically solving this for a C, right? This would be negative 3 over there in the bottom should be negative 12. All right. And then as you approach this now, uh, that would basically be a positive. So let's just save that, you know, save time there. And then to, to solve for C, you can multiply the right-hand side by the reciprocal of that fraction, 12 over 3. Right? That causes the whole right side to go bye-bye. And then you would do the same thing because whatever you do to the right, you got to do to the left. So 12 over 3 is simply going to be 4, right? 4 times 1 is obviously 4. So C is going to be 4. All right. Now we go back to the original. And just instead of having the C there, just simply plug in now the value of 4. All right. Plug in the value of 4. And that's the function. This is it now. Okay. This is it. Now you can clean that up if you want, right? You can kind of factor... Well, not factor, I should say FOIL. FOIL the denominator, so you can have something like this. 4, you can have 4, x minus 3, all over. Remember the quick way to factor, it's this times that, right? Meaning the x times the x, that's just x squared. Then simply take this and this term, add them together, and plop on an x. So that's negative x. And then the multiplication between the 3 and the 4 uh, should give us negative 12. All right, so that would be another way to write it, and that's probably more appropriate way, but it really doesn't make a difference. Then what you can do is you can go and check yourself, right? So clear out all the functions in there and just start checking. So do four times now. I'm going to do a double parenthesis to make sure I plug in everything correctly. Make sure the numerator stays in the numerator, right? This is going to mean that this is the numerator, all right? And then divided by now, the whole denominator goes in a parenthesis, x squared minus x, all right? Where's my, oh boy, minus x minus 12, Close the parenthesis, close it again, and what that means is that the the 4 is going to be multiplied by the whole thing. I'm probably doing a little overkill here with the uh, parentheses, but rather overkill it than underkill it, right? Well, if you kill it, can you underkill it? No, you just kill it. Right. Anyway, take a look at the picture. It matches beautifully with the graph that we have in front of us. Thank you very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Check out our channel, by the way, because we have thousands of videos, not only here in math, but we have physics, chemistry. We have a whole lot coming. See you soon.